Friends, will you pray with me? Our gracious sovereign and our God, assist me to proclaim, to spread to all the world abroad the honors and glories of thy name. Amen. Friends, I, I, I love my Bible. Uh, I, I specifically really like this one. I had somebody ask me about the story about it, and I realized many people here wouldn't, wouldn't know how I came to get it. Uh, it was a gift to me on my birthday a couple of years ago, back in 2018, from a friend of mine, John Hayes, who had begun joining us for a men's Bible study early in the morning on Tuesday mornings. And John and I got to be good friends, and what had happened was in a worship service where I had kind of an, an older Bible that wasn't as well put together as this one, I had kind of worn that Bible out after uh, a, a decade and a half of ministry. And so during a message, I was kind of going with my arms like this, and as I did, a whole section of the Bible flew out. And it, although it's good to have a pastor who who wears a Bible out, it's kind of tough when you lose a whole section of it flying out during the middle of worship service. And so John had got me this Bible that wouldn't fall apart, and I love it. It looks nice. Uh, it kind of almost a little too ornamental, but oh, I love using it. And it took on a real special meaning to me in the wake of kind of a difficult time that happened for John. John suffered a massive stroke and in his recovery from that, I watched his faithfulness and the faithfulness of his wife, Tanja, and their two daughters, and the way they rallied around John, and the way he battled every day to learn how to walk again and to be again and, and to get back to something approaching where he was before the stroke. And now every time I hold this or read this or pull it out and look into it. I remember that he got me a little bit of large print words so I could still see it. And oh, I think about his courage and faith. You see, there's something about the Bible that gives us courage and faith. It's not necessarily just when we read it or take it in. It's when it really kind of enters our lives and transforms who we are. And that happens because somewhere in the Bible, when we read it and experience it, we are expecting to re-experience the same movement of God that people in the past are recorded to have had in its pages. And so I love this Bible and I read from it all the time and I'm so blessed as we begin this sermon series where we look at a book by Kate Bowler. We called it Lives We Love and it's based on a book that says everything happens for a reason and other lives We've Loved by Kate Bowler, and as we look at that book in this study, I, I hope you'll hold on to your Bible, that you'll keep it close, that you'll look at the passages we're reading and what we're talking about and why it might be important, because what has happened in the world is many people taking parts of this out of context have used it in a way that sometimes when you hear what they say, it sounds like it's biblical. But if you encounter the courage and strength and love that you find in these pages, the way they use it to beat up others or to talk down to people just simply doesn't fit the God we meet in the pages of the Bible, or in the experience of other people. And, you know, first and foremost, what the Bible is, is a gateway to salvation from the stories of others being made available to us through the blessing of the written word. You see, somehow we believe that when we retell stories of faith, when I share a story like I did about my friend John Hayes and how faith sustained him, 
and lifted him up in difficult times that somehow God might draw near us or remind us in our time of great difficulty that we are not alone and that God is with us. So when people set the Bible up to do things that have nothing to do with salvation or being lifted up in our time of difficulty, it becomes kind of odd for me to hear what it is. I I just kind of Googled and looked at it, and when you look at what is the Bible, uh, it's an answer book. And and I want to show you, friends, I mean, when you go through my book here, Uh, It's not like a teaching manual. A school is starting in much of the country again, and many teacher manuals will have a writing, and then they'll have like a little answer. They'll have some more student work, and then a little answer. No, there's nothing in here that has just all the answers. In fact, I'm afraid, friends, that the Bible I read and the Bible you read is that same Word of God on display for us. So what is it? Uh, Other people will say it's like an instruction manual. It's a a how-to, just like out on on, uh, the internet, they have all of these how to do this and how to do that and how to do that. And so when you have a life crisis or challenge, look to the Bible and there will be step-by-step instructions about what to do and how to live. Have they read it? Now, what happens in the Bible is you get stories of faith being told to you over and over again by people who have experienced God's movement in their life. And and so what happens often when we try to read the Bible is we'll hear a, a rule, an axiom, or a truth, and we'll say, well, okay, this person on this day in this context back then had something happen to them. Therefore, they did this, right? And then we look at our day and time. Well, why aren't people doing this? irrespective of day and time or context we're in, we take something that's so beautiful and make it into something that doesn't quite fit. I mean, think of it like this. It's like, how many of you have ever come to a locked doorway? Now, I I know today what will happen is people will tell me all about their digital passcodes. It's so different now. But in the old day, you used to have like keys, right? Y'all have seen a key, and for a key, you have to kind of put it in the lock, and what happens when you can't see it is there are little tumblers in the lock, and unless the key lines up and you turn it, it doesn't quite turn. You see, when we look at the past and try to say that's how to do the future, we run into a challenge or, or, or kind of problem with the logic where it doesn't always fit one-to-one. So what makes the tumblers turn? It isn't necessarily a rigid adherence to some sort of rule book. What it is is that at a time in our life and in our faith, we see the Bible for what it is, Stories of how the Spirit of God have moved, has moved in the life of people who have gone before. And, and when we see that, when we come to understand that, that it's a series of testimony after testimony after testimony of how by, through faith, People in all different times, in all different contexts, in all different situations have come to be saved by a redeeming God. It's then that our minds become open to the possibility that yet again, maybe sometime tomorrow in the situation or challenge we face, that that same living God might draw near in a way that lifts us up, that provides us salvation, that reminds us that we are not alone. 
you know, I can't help but wonder in this day and time where some people are wearing Bibles out and sometimes they're following, falling apart, what are you reaching for to wear out during the pandemic and all the stress that goes with it? I mean, are you wearing out your liquor cabinet? Are the knobs on the doors getting hard to find or wearing out? Are you wearing out the kitchen where you're eating too much and engaging in things that aren't healthy for us? Are you wearing out a spouse or friend with complaint after complaint and just horrible, horrible things that you say because you feel like life is out of control? Are you wearing out public servants and saying horrible things about people of other parties and other affiliations? We're wearing out something. I hope you'll wear out the Word of God in this season because it transforms how we interact with the world. When we receive the stories of faith that have been given to us, we live in to what our text says we are to be. Have you read that text? Have you heard it here? In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 16, and, and mind you, I've normally just heard it from verse 16, all Scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof and correction, and for training righteousness, right? So all Scripture is God-breathed or God-inspired is what it says. But that seems a misquote to me in taking the text a little out of context. It doesn't mean that, that every word is of the same value as every other word. What's actually said here is this is a letter from Paul to Timothy. Timothy is a young pastor trying to learn his trade and to get involved in the lives of those he serves and trying to find out what he needs. Paul's writing to remind him that the stories of faith through the centuries that have been collected, the, the God sightings and God movement might benefit him in his ministry. And so he says, but as for you, writing to Timothy, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. And then all Scripture is inspired by God. You see, he says that it is by God, through the Holy Spirit, that we're able to read and bring these stories into our life in a meaningful and transformative way way. And no matter who we've been in the past, maybe we were raised like Timothy in the church learning Scripture. And, and by the way, he was raised in a synagogue. Maybe we were raised like Timothy in the faith from the beginning, learning these stories of faith and how they change how we see the world. Or maybe we've done everything possible to do anything but pick up our Bible and to read and encounter these stories. But here's the deal, friends. That same living God who's described in the pages of this book has never stopped trying to reach you. Whether you pick this book up every day or whether you, you hardly ever look at it, God will pursue and chase you throughout your life until finally you come home to these stories of faith, to these blessings to humanity, this incredible narrative that shares with us time and time again how real people just like us had failed to turn back to God, had not done what was right. And at that key moment, 
when all seemed like it would be lost and destroyed, God showed up and did something amazing. You know, as we kind of go through this process in time of how we're going to reopen our culture again and public spaces like the sanctuary, I get pressed a lot by different people who want me to tell them what they think they want to hear. I get pressed by some people who feel like it's way too early that the disease is still being transmitted in our community, and how could we even think of opening a public space back up? I get pressed by other persons who, who want me to know that, that they just can't live without the church and they can't live without its teachings. They can't not be here, and they're desperate to come back. And all of these people are blessed children of God, with stories of faith and vibrancy that are alive. And I want you to know that your Bible can help you in these times. It can be there for you to remind you of stories of faith. Uh, imagine for a minute the people of Israel in a time of great waiting before the Messiah would arrive. Uh, how many years was it? A hundred 200, 800 years from the time of the prophecy to the time of the birth of Jesus, from the beginning of the stories of faith, at least half a millennia until they would be realized in the person of Jesus Christ our Lord <laughs> and me. I can't even make it 26 weeks. You know, when we look in our Bible, we kind of find what we seek. And, and here I want to show you how the Holy Spirit can kind of help us. Uh, some people will go to it and they're going to count words, they're going to see pages, they're going to look for numbers. We look for what we're trying to find. But Dr. Roy Heller, who taught my Old Testament class, said about this before we embarked on our journey through the Old Testament in the class, after kind of letting us know that you could make an A in his class and not really have ever gone too deeply other than the passages we were looking at and some memorization in the Old Testament. He said, but you will have failed at life and missed the gift God could bring you and he told us of a story of how he was traveling in the Northeast one time and how he was there on a, on a train headed up into New York. And as he was on this train, he could look out and he could see all these amazing things. And he said, your journey through the Bible is like that. You're going to find all these amazing stories in a different culture, in a different place, and you're going to look out and you're going to see all of these amazing facts, figures, numbers, and storytelling things going on. But he said on that train, suddenly they went into a tunnel, and all he could see in the window was a reflection of himself. I think, I hope that as we read and engage scriptures, we look at what it can mean in these crucial questions of life when we look at trying to move our life from falsehood to truth so that we kind of move into understanding the world through the eyes of God's love and grace and we become enriched by the faith God can give each one of us. My biggest hope for you is that whenever you open your Bible and read it, you find the story of yourself in a way that causes you to see who you are, but also reminds you who God has called you to be. For my friends, this beautiful book and the love it contains is not meant to be confined to the words on the page, but can be almost miraculous 
when the words on the page move into our hearts and become acts of love in the world. Don't forget what you've been taught from your youth. Hold on to the stories of faith and remember that all of the words here can be God-breathed and inspired when you let the words of faith become faith in your heart. Amen.